Hello, everyone who is joining us. My name is Darren Kagan. You might remember me, I was on CNN for a number of years. And after I left, I became a content creator. So I have my website, darrenkagan.com, where I create uplifting and positive stories. A big part of my business, though, has also been as a writer for story terrorists. I've had the honor and pr privilege of writing a number of books with a number of story terrorist clients. And some of those have been amazing out of this world stories, like a, an Indian chief who rose from being a foster kid. And some have just been great everyday people who wanted to get their stories done. And I will tell you as a writer, I've enjoyed them all equally. So wherever you are on the spectrum, if you think you have this amazing story to tell, or you're not even sure your story is that big, I can assure you, you've come to the right place with Story Terrors. I am super excited that you're here. I wanna give you a little bit of an idea of what we're gonna to do today. So you're gonna meet some people who have created their book. You're gonna meet a lot of the behind the scenes people in Story Terrors. And hopefully by the time we're done, you'll have a better idea of how the process works. And of course, we're hoping that you'll believe that Story Terrace is exactly the place in the company that can help you make your dream come true of writing your life story or the story of whoever you're, you're looking to write. None of us would be here today without the man who created this company. And have you ever had that experience where you go, I should have thought of that. I should have created this company. Well, that's the case with our, our creator. Rutger Bruning. Let me bring him in. Rutger, hello and welcome. Uh, we need to unmute you. There we hi, go. Hi, hello. Darren. Everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good, good morning, evening. Good morning. Who knows? Like, good evening, because I think we do have people joining us from all over the world, because that, that has been the case with Story Terrorists, yes? That you have people who have written their life stories all around the world? Yes, absolutely. We, we have written stories on all the different time zones in the world. Uh, we uh, have most writers in the UK and in the US, but we have work with writers all over. So interestingly, this story begins with a life regret of yours. Tell me yes. a little bit about that. Um, so my grandparents, who you can actually see on, on the right, mm -hmm. uh, I was very close with them. I spent a lot of time with them during the holidays. And my mom, she worked as an academic and uh, that meant she needed some peace and, and quiet at home uh, during the holidays. And uh, that meant that I got to spend some time with my grandparents, which I really enjoyed. My grandfather was a great storyteller. And he told me um, about you know, his life, why he became a doctor, how he traveled, but also how he set up a small resistance group in the Netherlands in the Second World War, um, how he moved to the Caribbean with my grandmother to work there um, as a doctor after the war. And those stories really fascinated me. But after he passed away, the stories faded much, much quicker than I expected. And I regretted not recording them. I did have the idea. I just never did it. Um, with my grandmother at the same time, I really wish I'd asked her more questions about her life. Um, you know, there, uh, she lost a lot of family in the war and it was difficult to ask some questions. And as a result, I never did it. Um, so from two very different angles, I wish I recorded stories uh, of my family. And I've been thinking about this problem for over a decade until I thought I, I had a solution. So most people, I mean, we all understand regret, right? Woulda, shoulda, coulda. But how does someone like you, who was not in the storytelling business, then go and turn it into a company that has helped so many people and so many families? Um, I had many, many different ideas. That's where it, where it starts. Uh, but none of them seem to really be scalable. Um, they just seem to maybe work for just my family with quite a lot of work to, to do something, which you know, I was prepared to do for, for myself. But I also wanted to solve this problem because I, I heard from many other people that they had the same regrets. Uh, and then um, I realized um, that the freelancer platforms were gaining traction. There were a lot of incredible writers who used to be employed by big media companies. They were offering their services by the hour, um, but mainly they were doing that to write copy for websites. Um, and, uh, and I thought that we could use them to help people like, like you and me uh, write their own and, and their family stories and, uh, and match them in smart ways uh, so that, that it can be a really great experience and can be something scalable for everyone to do. So I love stories like yours because to me, I call them inside out stories. You take something that you regret or that you wish hadn't happened and you turn it inside out to do something positive. And it's wonderful that you've gone from regret to watching all this joy around the world, all these different stories that have been told. 
No, it's it's unbelievable. We you know we, we have been and are working on uh, over two and a half thousand stories uh, that we're turning into books. And I have the privilege of, of hearing sometimes just one or two sentences that we share internally when a new book is completed. Uh, and it's just so fascinating to see the diversity of those stories and uh, how many people will be touched by them, not just today, but also in 20, 30, 40, 50 years uh, is what I really hope. Well, I know you're going to stay with us throughout the hour and you'll be able to answer questions at the end. So don't go anywhere. You're not excused from the table. I want to, to move on and bring in our, our two most honored guests. We're excited that everyone's here today, but we're very, very excited that the uh, Sander family is here. And that is Chris Sander and his father, Esvon. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. We're really excited to be here and share our story. So, um, Chris, this story starts with you. You decided, well, let's go back. Even before you decided you want to do your dad's story, your wife had used this story terrorist platform. Yeah, so my wife is uh, prides herself on being the, the ultimate gift giver. And as she goes about life is always looking for things that she thinks can be a perfect fit for, for Christmas, et cetera. Um, she actually saw an Instagram post many years ago. Um, so for, for Rutger, the social media works. Um, <laughs> she saved, uh, she saved the post and made a note for herself. And then I was probably about uh, three years ago at this point, gifted it to her father uh, as a Christmas present. And, um, you know, I got to see the, the process and was really, really impressed with the, the quality of writer that he was matched with. Um, I, I think he had actually been matched with a, uh, an Obama uh, biographer. And uh, just, you know, the process that he went through and, and was thought that this would also be a really great special thing for my parents. And I just want to say, if uh, for people who are tuning in, if you're thinking about giving this as a gift, this is going to be very instructive for you. But even if you're not, this doesn't obviously have to be as a gift. You can gift it to yourself. I think you're still really going to get a good behind the scenes look at how the Story Terrace project works, process works. So um, Chris, interestingly, um, then you decided, okay, we, now we get to do my dad's story. But um, dad, Esfan, you did not think that this was a great idea at first. No, not at all. <laughs> I thought it would be a lot of work for, for me personally. And uh, I, I didn't know if I would be able to pull together my memories and put it in proper order. So I, I was pretty much against it at the time. But as it was, we were going on uh, steadily, I started actually enjoying it and uh, get more excited and uh, started making notes. Even when I was on the computer, then I had a little notepad and everything I remembered, I started putting down notes and uh, try to put it in proper order. Uh, Chris helped me a lot uh, by, with the dates and things like that because my memory was fading a little bit. But uh, surprisingly, a lot of uh, memories came back, which one I completely forgot about. It. So That's awesome. We're going to ask you more in, a, in uh, just a minute more about the process. Um, but I, when we were thinking, I want to talk to everybody who's uh, tuning in, we were thinking about who we could invite to come on. One of the reasons we love the Sandors was that Esvon wasn't excited at first. And that's very transparent and authentic. So if you're thinking of giving a gift and that person might not be that excited, we're gonna get some tips as we go on about how you can kind of sell the process. Um, just keeping it honest and, and keeping it real that you can go from you did what and I'm supposed to do what to actually being very excited about the opportunity to get your life story down. I do have to ask Esvon, I mean, I think we could do a whole hour just with you, but give us a little nugget of your story. Where did you come from and how do you, I mean, again, we could do a whole hour, but just tell me a little bit uh, about how you come to be living in, in Florida in 2021. Um, I was born in Transylvania um, with a Hungarian nationality and uh, Romanian citizenship. I was born right after the end of the war. And uh, I practically grew up in a communist era and uh, we had to swallow everything which we were told. And <laughs> we had no TV at that time, only the radio. And uh, as I started working uh, 
uh, started running into all kinds of, uh, I don't have the right word. Ch challenges and things, is that what led you to come to the United challenges States? Challenges and on, um, sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> Nonsense, I think, is, is one of the words. Yeah, um, nonsense. Okay. Like to my stupid board, rules, uh, inefficiencies. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you a small example. Like, uh, uh, I finished the apprentice school to be a machinist. Uh, when I started working, I had to work on my own. Most people were in uh, groups and um, started making good money. Then, when they noticed I'm making good money, then they shoved me into a group where I started doing the same work and then ending up with one third of the salary I made previous month. Crazy. So I said, this is not right. Uh, the, why I'm getting less money? Because the money was swallowed up by the rest of the group who were older people and so on and so. so um, well, I totally see how we could talk uh, about the story for an hour. And Chris, I see why, you know, your dad comes to this country and he makes a life and he has a family. And I can completely see why you wanted to make sure the story wasn't lost to history and, and a book that can be passed down. Yeah. And just, just to add a point to that, you know, I grew up with, there's a million of these stories, right? And, and there's flamethrowers and dynamite. It, he's, he started easy. Um, <laughs> I grew up with these stories, um, but they were always in small pieces. And frankly, sometimes I heard the best stories when my friends would come over because my parents would just start telling stories because my dialogue with them is always about, you know, who was I dating? Was I eating enough? What was my job? How was I doing in school? Travel plans, you know, endless conversations around flights for Thanksgiving. And it was never this substance. Um, so, you know, when I've always wanted to do something like this and, and this just seemed like the perfect fit and we were, you know, so thankful to be paired with Kelly um, and to just have the full team, including Levy, uh, supporting us. Which now brings us to our team and to looking behind the curtain behind how Story Terrace works. Now, I know if you're tuning in, you're interested in how you can work with a writer, and we are going to get to our writer in just a moment, but there's a part about Story Terrace that I think is really the secret sauce. And, and now I'm speaking as someone who's been working with the company for a couple of years. When you sign up, you just don't get a writer, you get an editor. And I think the editor is really what sets the company apart. So I really want to get you to meet one of our best, even though they're all fantastic. And that is Levy Jokes. Levy, let's bring you in. Oh, <laughs> that little cowboy picture is just, mm. I love that. Too, too <laughs> adorable. Uh, welcome, first of all. Having me. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there. And thank you for joining. Happy to be here. What is the role of the editor in the Story Terrace process? The role of the editor, ooh, there's, there's so many hats that I wear, so many amazing hats, um, but my primary role is to be kind of the liaison between the writer and the um, client and move the process along to each individual step from the intro call to the writer matching, which personally is my favorite part, and then to the drafting phase where you get the um, table of contents and the first draft, second draft, and then all the way to the design stage. And then finally to print. I always tell our customers, my role as your editor will not end until your book is sitting in front of you at your house. That's when my role ends. So. Very good. Um, and I totally overlooked one thing. If you, for people who are joining, if you have questions um, as we go, whether it's questions for a specific panelist or questions about the process, you'll notice there's that little question icon, that the um, Q and A icon down at the bottom of the screen please just click on that and you can enter your questions there. And we'll get to the questions after we get to um, all of our fabulous guests. So both Chris and Levy talked about writer match. How do you help a client find their right writer, Levy? It starts for me with that first conversation, like whether like each project editor has an intro call with the client. That's usually like 15 to 20 minutes where we have that one chance to really connect with the client, whether they're the storyteller or whether they're the gift giver. And we just ask them a few questions about their life story, just get to know them a little bit. And just from that one intro call, we get an idea of what they might be looking for with the writer. And then we go off into our writer pool, which is 
consistently growing every month. We're constantly getting new writers. And that's where my job gets hard because I have to tailor down like from hundreds of writers to one specific writer for this client. But it's also really enjoyable just based on that first conversation. Well, in this process, the Sanders did very well because they matched with Kelly Boyer Sagert. And I want to welcome her in from Ohio. Kelly, welcome. Thank you so much. So you um, are a fellow writer um, at Story Terrace. Obviously, this is not your first writing rodeo. No. Before <laughs> Story Terrace, or in addition to Story Terrace, give us an idea of the kind of writing that you do professionally. I've been writing professionally for 31 years now. Um, probably my bread and butter right now is ghost blogging for various companies from mom and pop shops to large corporations. Um, I've also published probably a couple dozen books on my own, um, written some plays, and one of them was turned into Trail Magic, the Grandma Gatewood story that ultimately was um, nominated for an Emmy that we didn't win, but it was still an amazing experience. So I've done a pretty broad spectrum of writing because I've done it for so long. And in that whole book of work, why do you enjoy the Story Terrace clients that you work with? Do you know, when I went to college, I was sure I was going to become a psychologist. And I dropped out of master's, the master's program about a week before it happened. And it took me about six, seven, eight years to figure out why. And I realized I was fascinated with people. And so I love hearing these stories. And what I noticed, and it definitely happened with Eastbound and Maria, is stories are told in layers. You tell the story in a very factual way, usually early on, or what you're used to just saying. Everyone has sort of like a, an elevator pitch when someone asks you about, hey, you know, who are you? Mm -hmm. um, and then as time goes on, more emotion gets layered into it. Um, and so it, it just, it's just this uncovering as another, uncovering another person's life story is so meaningful and fascinating. So again, to take you all behind the curtain, the story terrace curtain on the writer side, what happens to either me or, or Kelly, we get an email that says, hey, we have this new story terrace client, this new storyteller, and they might be interested in working with you. And here's a little bit about them. Kelly, do you remember that first email and first yes. hearing about this project? Yes, I do. And, and the one thing that we're really not mentioning a whole lot is this was really a couple's memoir. East Bond was escaping from communism in one place. Maria was escaping from communism in another place and they didn't know one another. And so it was a couple's memoir. It was how are we going to tell both their stories and how once they uh, came together, it took like a date of going out bowling. And uh, certainly East Bond's, uh, he says, oh, I knew. <laughs> he goes, I knew that was my girl kind of thing. So it was telling these two incredibly amazing stories on the world stage but experienced as by one, you know, two individuals and how they came together and made a life uh, in the United States. So I do remember um, the bullet points and thinking, oh man, <laughs> that's got to be a story. Um, and as your own stories as well, when we're looking over in the comments, um, Emma was listening to your story and she was just saying, wow, amazing career, Kelly, career goals. Oh. You're not just inspiring thank people to tell their story, you're inspiring some of our other writers out there. Oh, well, thank you. As well, Isvan, you were holding back on us. You didn't tell us that this was a love story. Oh. <laughs> it was. It was, and it, yes, love that. Love that part of it. So now back to you and Chris, how did you know that Kelly was the right writer? What felt, did it feel right from the beginning? Um. Pretty much, I left it up to Chris okay. uh, to make the selection. Uh, Kelly, lo Kelly looked much easier because uh, she wrote her own books before, so she knows uh, how to go by it. And uh, um, we couldn't make a decision ourselves, so we left it our Chris uh, after Chris and. Uh, she selected Kelly and turned out that it, it was a good selection because we were able uh, to work with her very easily and uh, she helped us a lot. Got it. So let's talk about what happened. So you match. Kelly um, and Levy, you can talk about this. I, I mean, it's really the writer who kind of takes over at this point. You, they picked you, you've agreed to do the project. Then how do you get started and what happens? Um, we knew well, how many hours we will get out of uh, Kelly for the interview. So we have to schedule the interviews to make sure 
my wife and myself uh, both are free at the time and without any pressure from outside mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, did not rush anything you know so it was plenty of time in between the appointments if you put it that way and uh, the interviews uh, basically we just uh, talking and uh, she was putting it on audio tape and uh, then we were stuck a little bit then we had to ask her to help us out which way to go and everything else so it started slowly working better and better and uh, uh, after this we spent the extra time on editing uh, we included Chris naturally also what you think about this what you think about that and um, a lot of things we were not sure if we should put it in or not, you know, so. <laughs> so like Kelly, Kelly, you did it by phone or Zoom? How did you do this project? We actually, this was slightly before we started using Zoom. We did it by free conference call because I'm way up in the northernmost part of the United States and they're way down south. So we have not met in person. Um, some, of, some of the clients, you know, who, who've been in Ohio, I've met in person, but yeah, we did everything basically by phone. So, uh, Rutger, I'd like to bring you back in. I know when you first created the company, I know when I first started working with the company, that the definite idea was you were going to be matched with a writer who was in your area. That writer would come to you um, in person. This all sounds very like 1992. <laughs> but, um, and then, boom, the pandemic happens. But rather than stopping things down, there was a quick pivot. And now these projects can easily be done um, over the phone or over Zoom. That kind of opens up all sorts of possibilities too, because it means you can match with a writer who might be an even better match that maybe isn't in your geographic area. Yeah, we now really give a choice to people. So before the pandemic, 90, 95% of the projects were, were in person. And that's why we have this huge writer network. So we offer diverse writer backgrounds in many, many different locations. And if we don't have the right background, we find for the specific new clients, uh, the right writer for them, which can relate to many different Things like their, their backgrounds or language requirements sometimes, having a certain cultural understanding. Uh, today, I would guess we're at 50-50. Um, okay. The advantage of going for a remote one means you can pick anyone in our pool and we can help you obviously with that. Uh, but if you want to go local, we also have great writers that can meet you in person at home. Levy, let me bring you back in here. So once there's... The depending on the size of the package and the size of the book, right? It might be six hours of interviews, 10 hours of interviews. I've done one that was like 20 hours of interviews. The, the writer writes the first draft and then what happens? It's not like you just plop this down and say to the customer, here you go, you're done, that's it, you have no say. This is also a really good part of Story Terrace. Exactly. Um, we, when the writer gives us the table of contents in the first draft, it's our job as the editor to take a look at it, just glance over just make sure that what is in the draft is what the client really wants based off of the table of contents that they pre-approved and we just like this is where the editor and the writer kind of like do a team up and you know we ask the writer some questions saying do you think that this is what the client wants do you think the whole story is here is there anything else that you want to include or that you think you should include and if they give us a thumbs up saying everything is here we get a look at it we just check for any like spelling errors or mistakes then we hand it off to the client just to see what they think. We let them read it. Um, and once they um, come back to us, they have that one revision stage where they get to team back up again with their writer. So yeah, we have, there are several chances for the editor to look at the subsequent drafts coming afterwards, which is where I you know, got a chance to read Isvan's story so much. And I was like, I was so impressed. I was like, wow, like I never <laughs> talked to this man beforehand I mainly just was just interacting with Chris but I was like what a very fascinating story so that's really a treat for me to read those drafts um what about the photos that people want to include in books Levy how does that work well we usually contact the client or the story the gift giver and just like ask them you know collect at least 20 to 40 photos that you would like to use based off of the package they can have either 20 photos 30 photos or 40 photos and we just ask them to collect these around the drafting stage just to get them ready. And before we had them upload them to um, an online um, platform, but now we're using the bookmaker where they can also um, submit their photos to digitally. Um, and so um, a lot of clients really do enjoy that part of the process because, and they usually get very emotional during mm -hmm. the photo collecting stage because they're going through all these memories 
And it's just bringing up so much joy and emotions for them. So I find that this is where the clients really start delving into the process. Eastman, I think you have your book right there. Yes, you can show us your book. Yes, sure. Yeah. Ah, uh, there's, because people are asking what the title was. So you're calling it A Better Life. Yeah. Um, very good. Now, some people do story terrorist books just for the family to, or just to have for their own private. Some people want to publish books and, and story terrorists can help with that. Oh, there, oh, is there your lovely bride? <laughs> no wonder it was a love story. You're, she's beautiful. <laughs> so yeah. nice. Um, Chris, what was the point of this book? Was it just to have for the family or did you intend to put it up on Amazon and sell it? I think we could sell probably a hundred copies today, today because people were like, oh, wait, I want to hear more of that story. Um, no, it, it was, uh, you know, my brother has two, two young uh, girls um, now, seven and 11. I just had a son in December. Congratulations. And, um, thank you. And, um, you know, memory fades and it's, this uh, this story, we, we, so no, we're not, we weren't thinking to put it on Amazon or anything like that, but you know, it is a, um, it's a period piece because it's not just their life stories, but it's in the context of the Warsaw Pact and treaties between countries. Um, and in a time of history and a part of history that in the US at least, we didn't really learn a lot about because in the 60s, 50s, a lot of our history in the history books, as we learn in school, is you know Korean War and the precursors to the Vietnam War, et cetera. And there's all these incredible things that were happening uh, in Central and Eastern Europe. And there are certainly movies about individual pieces, but to really view history through the lens of my parents was really just an incredible journey. And it's and it's a, it's a very powerful book for us, for our family. And then uh, bringing Kelly back in, did you feel... It's one thing to be so up close like Chris and, and Esfan were and are, but as a writer, did you feel like you were having like a front row to history here? Oh yeah, because like like saying there's this, this broad context of what was going on in the world. We hear about World War II. We don't hear about, okay, so then the Russians helped mm -hmm. to free people in, in Hungary and Romania, what happens next? That is just skipped over and to hear it like Maria agonized about leaving her mother, thinking she may never see her again. And that was a reasonable fear. It didn't play out that way. But yeah, the, there was the, the love story, the, the stories of having to make decisions that would change your life forever. You mean, and you don't get to know what that change will be. Ultimately, there were lots of wonderful things happening, but in that moment, they couldn't have known that. So there was a lot of going back to how did you feel in the moment? Now you know that it worked out wonderfully well. You met the love of your life. You had this wonderful family. But how did it feel when you had to decide, in Maria's case, am I getting on that bus knowing I may never see a loved one again, knowing I might get arrested? You know, so to get back in that moment, there was a lot of that during this particular memoir. Kelly, I know um, as Fawn talked at the beginning that he was kind of reluctant, that he didn't think he would have the memories to come back. How do you help clients um, that feel like, oh, well, I have so much to say, but I don't know how to organize it or uh, reluctant, I don't know how to do this. How do, how do you set those people at ease? I encourage conversation. Um, I'll tell them, we don't have to worry about what's going to go in because East Fond would say, I'm not sure this part of my business I want in the book. And I'll say, that's okay. If you feel comfortable telling me, tell me and we'll decide that later. Um, so I try to keep it as conversational as I can. I try to tell them you're not responsible for putting the chronology and the framework that that's my job. You know, you can, you can tell me what you appreciate like Maria says, Oh, I want it to, I, there's these movies I love on YouTube from Hungary. I want the beginning to be like one of those moments. So you can, and, and she was right. The, the feedback she gave for the opener was exactly right. But I tell them that's not your responsibility. That's mine. You give me the feedback and then you just relax and let me do my thing. Um, and so Esfan, when we started talking to you, you, you were very honest and you said you were reluctant to do this. On this side of the process, what do you think about the whole story terrorist process and, and having written your life story in your book? I'm glad I did it. Yeah. So uh, I enjoyed it. I'm enjoying reading the book. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was nice to uh, put my memories together, you know, and uh, in proper order and to think about them. It was... Uh, 
I enjoyed uh, refreshing my memory and thinking about certain things. Oh, you, I remember this and was telling my wife, you know, it was so much fun and everything else or the things which were not that fun. And to uh, talk about these things, uh, going back to when I was uh, four, four and a half years old, my memory goes back to that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I enjoyed that, bringing those things up and uh, talk it over with my son and uh, and uh, they had actually made a I, comment I'm oh, sorry yeah uh, only one thing which, which I made it even greater I had more chance to talk to my son <laughs> <laughs> and because in the past when they were teenagers they never had time for us <laughs> okay so that that's why when they were hearing stories when I was telling uh, his friends or colleagues or whatever, he was surprised about it because those guys were interested in it, but he wasn't at that time, you know, <laughs> when he was younger. So we were only a house, schoolhouse, everything is fine. Yeah. But they never just said that, okay, let's talk to each other, you know, so. So this was the byproduct. Of course, the, the focus and the purpose and the goal was to create this book but the byproduct of that was this quality time, new memories that you've created with your with your son. Exactly. exactly. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then on the storyteller side, I know I know Kelly and Levy. What happens is, you know, storytellers isn't selling like boiled peanuts, right? It's it's selling <laughs> storytelling, and it's a very personal process. And I know we all kind of get connected <laughs> and and feel really connected to the people that we get to work with. It's a very personal process. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, you start out every memoir, you don't, I've never written a memoir of someone I've known beforehand. Mm -hmm. And you start out just kind of trying to figure out, you know, where do you live? What's your name? You know, <laughs> what, what was your parents' names? And, and within just a matter of a short amount of time, it's like someone you feel like, you know, and you want to know more. You know, tell me more about what you said about this, or what, what, what do you mean that that's, that was the job you had when you were only 10 or um, and, and the other thing that's, that's so amazing is when you write stories of people that lived a life so different from your own, um, whether it's because they came from a different country, because they've had different experiences in the United States, it really, it broadens my world every time I have one of these conversations. And what about for you, Levy? Yeah, I was, I was saying like as an editor, it, it really does, like I really appreciate the job that I have because every day I'm building a new relationship with someone that like as Kelly said I've never heard a lot of these stories before you know and it, there are people who come from different walks of life who I interact with and who I never would have um, either way and um, one relationship that I really do see blossom that I appreciate is the relationship between the client and the writer like I'm more of the business facilitator of the group so I don't get as much personal interaction with the customer as I would like but to see at like clients and writers building these friendships and building these relationships after the project is done is just such a really beautiful thing. And it really connects them more to our company and what our values are, which is building bridges and you know making these connections and building memories. So. And you might not get that one-on-one -on -one like we writers do, but I will say again, why I think the editor process and that role is so important. I know that I've worked with Story Terrace clients that have come to this company after they've tried to be out there on their own, just finding a writer, you find a writer, you pay them, they don't show up or there's no connection, there's no accountability. The, I, I know we can say from the writer and the um, customer side, the editor keeps you accountable. Like, here's the schedule, let's keep going. Where are you, you know, keeping deadlines. So it's not just like you're out there chasing somebody who you just have no connection to and can't get. And I think, Again, I think that's really, really important. I don't, I don't know how Rupert thought of that or <laughs> if it mm -hmm. just kind of evolved with the company, but it's, it's really important. And I think it sets this company apart. I think the idea has always been to be very transparent and to be very clear about what we offer. How many hours of interviews do you get? How many words do come out? How many pages? What does an extra copy cost? And, and as part of that, we, we play that role and, and facilitate uh, as well, obviously, um, you know, making sure that the writer, and we've got a couple of great ones on the call here, but make sure that they deliver great work every time uh, to us. And if something happens that we can step in and uh, you know, everyone can get ill and that we make sure that um, the, pro the project for the family keeps going. 
Um, and sometimes, um, like I know a lot of the projects I've written or have worked on, it starts one level because you think you want to write this size book and you get going and you're like, wait, this is a bigger story or I want more interviews. But that's all structured. It's all set. It's it's not it's um, not ambiguous. It's like oh, you you started with this. You want this. We have a way to make that happen um, with a specific menu, a person like Levy that you can talk to. It's it's the structure. I think really really helps these projects get completed, so that you get ultimately what you want. Yes, no surprises. Yeah, no surprises. Um, Rutger, when you're hearing these stories, like the Sanders story, I, I think it probably never gets old for you. Yes. No. Yeah. No, and they're genuine. I mean, I, I get the question quite often. Uh, and is every story worth telling? And, you know, initially I thought so, but I didn't know for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we're 2,500 stories along the way. And uh, obviously I haven't read all of them because I have some <laughs> other work to do sometimes, uh, but I dip into them. And especially you know, things to me that seemed like people that said in the beginning, oh, I've, I don't have so much to tell, like, like you said, Darren. And, you know, there's always, when people are honest in their books, they're so incredibly worth writing down because um, there's so much lessons and, and reflection that you can find there, which, you know, go through the generations. Um, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really great for me to have the opportunity to, to see that and, and firsthand see many, many changes in history as well. So when you started the company, when, when did you start the company? When did you start? Story 2014. 2014, so this has been fat, like this is fewer than 10 years. Uh, less than 10 years. Um, is this what you predicted or has this already gone beyond what you predicted it could be? No, my goal is to make sure that it becomes a normal part of life for people to capture their life story. Uh, and I wish I had from my grandparents four books in, in my cupboard and maybe eight from my great grandparents. Now, you know, I started a company, so I won't get there. Um, but that, that's the goal. And I um, mean, that will not just be done by story chairs, but uh, I, I personally no, I, I won't be satisfied. I wasn't expecting to be there today uh, until we've come there and people see this as, as a very common thing to do. Today, people like the, the Sandor family are early adopters and they take a punt on us as a small company. I'm very grateful for that, but I hope in the future this will be a really accepted thing to do. Awesome. Well, I want to thank all of our panelists for sharing so much and being so open. You're not excused yet. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> You've been getting some fabulous questions in the chat. So up front, I just want to say thank you to everybody who has um, been um, submitting your questions. We're going to get to as many as possible. And if for some reason we don't, I'm going to tell you at the end how you can get in touch with all the Story Terrors folks and, and definitely get your question answered. So let's switch over to questions and this can go to any of the panelists. Um, the first one is from Janet, who says, I've written the first draft of 130,000 words. Janet, first of all, let me say, <laughs> all due respect if you've written 130,000 words, um, but she needs to start the editing process. My biggest problem is there's no thread of themes. My life just seems to be a chaotic mix of events. I think that's a good question for Levy. If we heard if you were sitting down with Janet and she signed up, how would you help her get started in the Story Terrors project, the process? Well, first of all, uh, Janet, again, wow, that is <laughs> good on you. Good for you. Good for you. So, yeah, if you would like to get started with us, I'll, well, we would just pair you down with one of our sales agents and then they would send you to an editor. And we would just like basically talk to you about like what goals you had for your book. You know, you'll get kind of like that consultation at first, like, um, where do you want your book to go and how would how can we tailor this to make it more like concise and just like bringing your story to the fold and to the forefront so that's how you would get started with us per se i know i've certainly seen these type of projects come across um like i've seen email pitches for that to say we have somebody who's written this will you help them edit it um i I've, I've seen the reach out to writers on that so i don't think that's that's unusual for a story Not at all. Yeah. yeah, like we, we, yeah, we have opened ourselves up to doing some copy editing as well to doing, um, mm -hmm. that's another part of our process that we have just recently um, adopted. So we can definitely provide that service for Janet. And, and we sometimes work with manuscripts that are completed like this one. Mm -hmm. And it's more about rewriting it. Usually they get a little bit shorter uh, is the experience, but also sometimes manuscripts are not finished or there's a whole part missing. And we do a combination of, of writing and editing to create the book um, that ultimately our client wants. Yeah. 
Paul um, asked the question. He says he's been advised by so many others to document my stories, but I need help getting started. So Paul has a great question and um, I think sounds like a great place to start with Story Terrors, um, both for um, Levy and, well, we can bring Levy and Kelly and Rooker in with this. People can come from ground zero, right? Just that you know you have a, you have a story and you have no idea how to tell it or organize it. Maybe there's one thing to mention, which I don't think we've mentioned yet, is we also start with a questionnaire. Right, let's talk um, about the questionnaire. And the questionnaire is being used in two very different ways. Um, some people, they use it just to read, and it helps them bring back memories, and they start thinking about what they want to talk about with their writers, and they don't write down a single word. Mm. Other people, they use the questionnaire, and they spend days and more memories are coming back and they're typing and they're typing and it goes to their writer before they start the, the interviewing process. Um, so yes, most of our clients don't have a word on paper when they come to us. And Kelly, you've had all sorts of storytellers that you've worked with from, from not even the questionnaire to somebody who has had lots of things that they've written. Yes, and some people I find that they can tell their story brilliantly and, and freeze when they write something down. And when that happens, I'm like, okay, then don't write anything down, tell me. Tell me, and, and the other thing I found that's related to this is people will tell me, I have nothing interesting. I haven't done anything interesting in my life. And then they'll say, except for the time when I, and it will be this fabulous story. And <laughs> what I tell them, yeah, except for that time you know, when I went to the moon or whatever. So what I found is people don't know their own stories. And I will tell them that you don't know your own story because you've, you've lived your life. You don't know that that's an unusual way to live a life because you only know your own. And so sometimes conversations then will bring out things as they're denying they have a story, they're telling you a fabulous story. I had one storyteller who was the exact opposite. When we would do the over the phone interviews, he was very shy and would only give little pieces. And then he would say, oh, but I have a few ideas. And then he would send me these things. It, it was the most beautiful writing. I was like, whoever told you you couldn't write? Yeah. So he actually, he believed he was a terrible writer, but with the right prompts, it was beautiful, beautiful writing. So yes, your writer with the right match will help you get that story out in the way that, that works the best for you. And, and I think the thing that's amazing about Story Terrace is it's the whole spectrum. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's not like you must do it this way. You work with a writer who will say, okay, how, how do you want to do this? What's going to work best for you? Um, Pooja is listening to this um, webinar and thinking, I think she's thinking a little bit like SBOM, like, oh goodness, how much time is this gonna take? Um, how long does the whole process take? And I think that's important to answer both from how much time do you, does the storyteller need to put into, I think people also really wanna know, okay, from the time I start, when do I have that book in my hand that I can hold? Levy, maybe you can talk about that. Um, well, with the timing of the process, we are um, very flexible with that. Like we are willing to go with whatever deadline the client um, has for their particular story. Um, and that's where it falls really on the editor to real, if the client has a tight deadline that they like, I want this book out. It's like, um, I want it published within like two months. That's mm -hmm. up to me as the editor to be like, okay, so this is what our plan's gonna be. This is what our schedule is. This is what the deadlines are. And that's where we work with both the client and the writer to make sure that everything is running along smoothly so that the client can make that particular deadline. And then there are clients that I get that are just like, you know, I just want to sit with this for a while. I want to, you know, just like take my time working with the writer and um, interviewing and just really just sink my teeth into the process. And that usually takes like maybe three to four months for that, like for that particular project to happen. But yeah, our, our timelines for each book is really different. And we're also very, very flexible. Yes. And once you come up with the timeline, there's Levy and the other editors line. Okay. I am there. I am so <laughs> annoying. I will email you every, like at least twice a week being like, are we okay? What are we, what's going on? There. I will be, I'll be there. <laughs> yes, he's there. I promise. And he's not the I'm only there. one. A uh, question from Mike and Rickard, this was probably for you. Um, I've read about the available book format. So when you go on storyterrace.com, it says, oh, you can do this package and this package. But what Mike would really like, he doesn't see. He wants to do mm. like a 300 page, what he's calling a literary memoir. I don't know if you know exactly what he means by that, but what if somebody's interested in getting help but doesn't see it on the website? What would you suggest? Yes, so the packages are really there because we want to be transparent. And, uh, but we work a lot with bespoke or custom packages. Um, 
where there's maybe some research involved or people want a longer book than that's available or people want to have interviews in certain languages or they have manuscripts existing partially. So we work with quite a lot of different requirements and we price them up like our other packages up front. So you know exactly what, you know, what you're going to pay and what you're going to get back for that. Um, we have a requirement that we work in nonfiction. So we don't write fictional stories. That's that's not what we do at Storytellers. Very good. And I also have seen just in the time that I've been associated with the company, as the company's grown, you've gotten requests for certain things like, oh, well, we didn't do that, but we didn't know that we wanted, you know, it's grown. And the, certainly the services that you've offered um, have expanded as the clientele has asked for it and um, seen what's possible. Absolutely, especially around self-publishing and the support that we do around it. We've expanded quite a lot in helping people promote their books and getting them on Amazon, many other platforms. Um, that's not something we originally did. This is a question from um, Annette. What if you're capable of writing your own story, but you just need help editing? I think we kind of covered this. Um, can you just get help editing? Levy? Absolutely. Yeah, we do. Like if you have a manuscript already written and you come to Story Terror saying, I, um, I just have my thoughts down. I really want someone to help me kind of make them cohesive. That's where we are able to help you. We're able to pair you with the copy editor. And um, I will also be your editor and we'll just kind of like form this team where we'll help your document kind of like um, judge out the details and making sure that everything just flows really nicely. So we do offer that service to our customers who are coming in with the full draft they want help with. Here's um, a good question from Karen who says, um, my early journey was traumatic and I, but as she's writing her story, she doesn't want it to be depressing. She wants it to, you know, to like, touch on it, but like go there, but not go there. Like, oh, to read that and go, well, that's a sad story. Um, Kelly, how do you help a client shape a story like that? You know, I had somebody who had some, some pretty serious issues as a child and said, well, again, I don't want it to be too depressing. Why don't we just leave that out? And I said, let's talk through what triumph is. And triumph is overcoming adversity. So if we never mention the adversity, where's the triumph? And as we kind of talked through that, I said, now it's a matter of balance. How much of that um, tragic event do you need to include in order to show how you've overcome and, and created the, the life that you've wanted? So it's, it's talking through the purpose of sharing adversity as well as how in depth do we really need to go to make the point you wanna make? And everyone's different. A couple questions for uh, Rutger and then also um, Levy can come in with this. What if you're matched with your writer and it's just not a match? Um, what is the- Levy, like do you wanna ex explain? Yeah, of course. Um, well, with each of our writer matches, yes, you are paired. We like. It's our job to pair you with one writer, but you're not married to that writer. If that's not a fit for you, you're welcome to just be as transparent as you can with your editor saying, I'm, I've read their profile, I've read the writing sample. I, it's just not really what I'm looking for. And then we can definitely look again for you and create another search. So it's not like we send you one writer and then that's it. You know, you're welcome to give us your feedback so that we can pair you with that perfect match because that is our goal to match you with your perfect writer, not just a good writer. So you're welcome. your feedback is always welcome with that aspect. Another important part of this company, um, and you can see this by looking on the website, there are all different types of writers and editors. Diversity is something that's very important for people, um, for the company to be providing the ultimate experience for all different kinds of customers. And I mean, customers and clients just to be practical, right? Um, on, in that theme, what, Rutger, what if someone's in Africa? Is there anybody who can help somebody in Africa write a story? Yes, we've done. I, I think I saw something in the chat about Botswana. We would mm -hmm. run that project from our London office, not from our Los Angeles office um, from, because of the time zones. But we work with um, either writers that are UK based or we can find people that are based more close to, to home as well if we don't have them in our pool yet. So it's not a problem at all. We do Africa. Absolutely. <laughs> we we've, definitely, we've done a number of books in, in Nigeria, Kenya. Um, uh, I, well, I, I could probably go on. Leanne is interested. Um, Ruger, you mentioned the questionnaire. Uh, can you give a kind of an idea of what the questionnaire looks like and how is it structured to help the process get going? Yes, I mean, there are different 
questions. There are some factual questions so that we can get the names right and the dates right, and it, you know, we don't you know, have to ask all these, these questions to spell them out in the interview. Um, but there are also some questions to start make you think, um, like describe the five most important people in your life. Once you start thinking who they really are and why they mean to you, what they mean to you, that is actually a huge question um, that you can think about for a very long time, but also your earliest memory or um, you know, your, your first job. And, and a lot of these things are more triggers than anything else. Kelly, we have one of our fellow writers out there joining in and she might be interested in um, becoming one of the story terrorist writers. What's the process in doing that? How, how are we handling that these days? For no, new I had actually seen an ad somewhere and I answered it. And the original answer was, um, oh, shoot, we're not hiring anyone in Ohio yet. And so I was like, oh, man, you know, and I don't know, several months later, uh, I got another email said, guess what? <laughs> Are you still interested? And I said, yes. And yeah. So then I sat and talked to one of the editors there and they walked me through the manual and, and said, you know, are you still in? And I'm like, absolutely. And it was it was nice and easy. Yeah, I, I, I do think there's a link on the storyterrace.com website that, um, isn't that right, Rutger, where you can click on to say for writers, um, it'll tell you how to get in touch with the company. Yeah, become a writer. There's, there's yeah, a link yeah. there. And we, just for our clients, we interview all of our writers um, before you know, we, we work with them. And we do that, obviously, to make sure that they've got good communication skills, uh, but also um, so we can get to know them when we make those matches that, that Levy has been talking about and we have a bit of a sense of their personality which you can't just see from reading their books a couple of questions on who owns the book once it's written record does story terrorists on the book or like did the sanders own their book how does that how do the rights work yeah legally how it works is quite complex how it works in practice is that we have a very simple form that we set up on docusign and uh, people take ownership uh of the book by signing that uh, and they've got 100 percent uh, copyright as a result uh, of signing that and again some people are interested in just keeping the family and some people want to to sell it and publish and doesn't really matter we can handle all of it we can handle all of it we always say we are not a publisher ourselves um, mm -hmm. so if you know if, if you're writing about a difficult topic we don't read it um, you know, as a legal read, for example, we help people write down a story that they want to write and we can point them in the right direction if they have legal concerns with their book, but we're really there to, to write the book that they want to have, and which is why, why, why we're also happy to hand over the, the, the copyright, even if legally initially that is partially with, with us or the writer. I know we're getting close to the top of the hour. I think Catherine has given us a really good question that, um, can come from a number of different panelists here. What makes Story Terrace different from the other storytelling services that are out there? Ruker, why don't we start with you? What, what, I mean, I'm sure you look and see, oh, there's other people in the storytelling business. What makes Story Terrace different? Um, we've got the best writers and the best uh, editors. Um, uh, um, uh, and we're, we're you know, we've got literally hundreds of writers. We've got, um, you know, 650 writers by now so we really really match someone with a writer that we think is, is right for them and um, we've got a beautiful online platform which helps us create efficiently really beautiful books you can upload your photos drag them in the right chapter um, i would say that our editors are you know, the most helpful people you can find uh, and it's a real pleasure to work with um, so yeah i think uh, uh, yeah that's that's it Chris, I'm sure your family shopped around, or at least your wife shopped around before she did um, her family story and then yours. What do you think makes Story Terrace different from the other services out there? You know, I, I think for us, uh, just the level of professionalism and um, the accessibility, and sometimes those two things don't necessarily go hand in hand. So not only did, did we have confidence that we were getting access to the best writers and I can't say enough things, good things about Levy. He was just an incredible uh, support throughout the whole process. But it also was easy. Um, it was easy to, um, you know, every step from the questionnaire to getting, um, you know, figuring out who the right writer could be and, and meeting Kelly and, and scheduling all the sessions and the editing and everything. Um, it was just very seamless, uh, easy, accessible, but at a very, very high level of quality. Very good. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, thank Esvan especially, even though you did hold back on the love story part. I'm a little <laughs> not ready to forgive you on that. Uh, 
and Chris and Levy and Kelly. Um, thank you for that. I'm gonna let you go. And um, we're gonna talk about, but before everyone else leaves that's joined us from around the world, we wanna show you um, next steps if you're interested. So let's go ahead and put that slide up and we can talk about that. Okay, so the, um, Rickard, you can jump in on this. There's This webinar was free, but wait, there's more. There's more free things you can do. Let's talk about the free consultation where you can actually discuss your rider match. And most people want to have a chat with us before they decide on their package, even though it's all transparent on the website, just because they want to make sure it's the right thing for them. Uh, and, and they have more detailed questions. I know we haven't answered all the questions in the chat, no. for example, because there are a ton and everyone has different ones. Um, so the best thing is to get in touch through our website. You fill in a few details and someone will give you a ring uh, and uh, help you find the right package and make sure this is something for you. And from there, you would get assigned uh, a wonderful editor like, uh, like Levy. <clears throat> and tell me about the, let's tell us, talk about the bookmaker. You talk about bookmaker. Um, this is a relatively new tool for story terrorists. It's, I can tell you from the writer side, very helpful. But people who are interested can actually set up a free account and, and check out the tool. Yes, that's possible as well. I think it's on the on the top right hand side of our website, but I need to. to I'm sure you can you can find it, and otherwise um, contact us, and we'll, we'll make you sure you get a demo of the platform or try it out yourself directly. And there's so many ways to get in touch. Of course, the easiest is the website storyterrace.com. Easy to remember. Um, there's email, contact at storyterrace.com. There are numbers you can see up on the screen if you're in the US or the UK um, that you can reach out. Really though, the easiest is probably starting with just an email saying, hey, got a great story. And then you can set up an exact time where you can get um, your consultation. Yes? Perfect, absolutely. Um, is there anything we did not get to Rutger that you think we need to include? I know there's a few questions we didn't answer, but we're, we're happy to do so. I think we, we touched on the most important things. I mean, just from my side, I mean, I just want to send a big, big thank you to the, to the Sander family, Chris and yeah. Isfan, and, and also to Kelly, of course, for joining us. Yes, uh, a big thank you to all of our panelists. We're going to let them go. Um, however, if you haven't had your chat question answered, I know some of the Story Terrace folks like Polly and Suna and ZB are going to be staying on on the chat to help answer some of the questions and help you get in touch. And um, so we're gonna sign off, but they will definitely be there to answer your questions. Thank you from everyone who joined us on the panel, who submitted questions, and especially to all of you who joined um, from around the world. It sounds like you have a fabulous story to tell. And of course, we're hoping that you do it with us here at Storytellers. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>